Today on Cruise Man's Garage, we're installing these Pathfinder LED caliper covers with LED position lights. These are not only super cool, but they're super bright, and they make a great complement to your Pathfinder LED cowl lights. So let's get started. These Pathfinder caliper covers have built-in LED position lights that make you more visible on the road. They minimize brake dust buildup, and the vented caliper covers provide better airflow for cooling. They add a custom style to your motorcycle, and they're manufactured from OEM-style ABS plastic. The caliper covers are offered in your choice of chrome or matte black. Your Pathfinder LED caliper cover with LED position lights contains everything you need for successful plug-and-play installation. Now this video assumes you already have installed the Pathfinder LED plug-and-play harness shown here. If you have not installed this, you will need to obtain this from Pathfinder LED, and we have a special video showing how to install this on your 2018 Plus Honda Goldwing. If you look in the description of the video, we will put a link to this video. Here's a list of the tools required for this installation. If you look at the bottom of your front fork legs, you'll notice two 10 millimeter axle bolts. We need to remove these bolts and set them aside because we will reuse these later. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to install this product on the right hand side, but the installation is identical for the left hand side, so you'll just duplicate everything I show you on the right side. With the bolts removed, we can now install the bracket for the right side. You'll notice how I'm positioning this bracket so that you make sure you get the correct bracket on the correct side. Reinsert the two 10 millimeter axle pinch bolts and lightly tighten them for now. You don't need to completely torque them. We'll do that in just a second. Now, using a torque wrench, tighten each of these bolts to 16 foot-pounds. Next, we need to remove the bolt that holds your hydraulic brake lines in place. You can see it here. Now, this is probably the most difficult part of this installation because this bolt can be difficult to remove. You'll notice the head is very shallow and sort of chamfered, so an Allen wrench often will want to cam out, and it's very easy to strip out the head of this bolt. So my recommendation is to really take your time. Make sure you have a good Allen wrench, 5 millimeter that has good square corners. You don't want one that's really worn down. You may have to use an impact driver such as this to get this bolt loose. So once we remove these bolts, I'm going to now position the caliper cover in place and use the provided 5 millimeter socket bolt to install the top bolt into that threaded area. Now you want to position the caliper cover so that the bottom part of the cover is over that bracket we installed earlier, and you want to make sure the wire harness is coming out of the top of that caliper cover. Now you only need to modestly tighten that top bolt and then you want to use a screwdriver to install the screw at the bottom where we installed the bracket earlier. I'm going to start by running my wire fish down through the tunnel area, kind of by the steering column down to where the wires are going to be at the top of that caliper cover. And I'm using a 36 inch cable tie, but you can use anything to fish these wires that works for you. And here I'm just putting a piece of tape on the end of my connector uh, onto that uh, cable tie. And now we'll go back up to the handlebar area and I'm gonna pull that wire harness up so that it comes out next to the handlebars. Now I found it was easier to run the fishing line from the front of the bike toward the rear. Uh, basically going from under the top shelter and come out kind of by the gas tank out toward the rear of the bike under the seat. You can do it either way. You can go from the rear to the front or the front to the rear, whichever is easier for you. 
By going from the front to the rear, however, I didn't have to uh, remove the tape from my uh, wires so that I didn't have to retape them. Uh, but either way is fine. However you find is easier for you. You can see here kind of where I kind of shoved that wire fish underneath the very front of the top shelter area. Now, you basically pull with one hand as you kind of push with the other, and you may have to go back and forth a few times to get that connector uh, to kind of fit. It's a very tight area for that connector to fit through, but once you get it through, you can see it comes out here uh, under uh, by the gas tank and underneath the uh, seat. You want to make sure you get as much of that wire fed through to the under seat area as possible. You don't want a lot of excess wire on the front of the bike. And now we can remove our wires from the fishing line. Here I'm using a cable tie to tie the front of that wire harness to the hydraulic brake line. I'm just doing this loosely. I'm not going to tighten it real tight. I just don't want that wire harness flopping around up there by the front wheel. And I'll put a couple of these cable ties uh, on this uh, wire harness and attach it to that hydraulic line just to keep it in place, keep it from flopping around, and then I'll trim off the excess of that cable tie. Okay. And I'll use one last cable tie around the frame rail on each side of the bike to keep the wires out of the way. Now back under the seat, you can see my plug and play harness is already installed. So it's just a matter of plugging my connectors into one of the four available sockets on that plug and play connector as I'm doing here on the right side. And then we'll plug in the left side and we're ready to go. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to click the subscribe button down below. And if you click the little bell icon, YouTube will notify you when we come out with new videos. Thanks again for joining us on Cruise Man's Garage.